In this video, we will show you how to replace your radio cluster bezel. Let's get started. Okay friends, let's get started on our instrument cluster. To get this off of here, we're going to have to remove the lower panel that comes underneath your steering wheel column. To remove this, we're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver. You'll find two Phillips head screws down along the bottom. Remove each of them. Now that we have the screws out of there, let's carefully grab onto this plastic panel and we'll try pulling it rearward. Now behind this panel, you're going to find that you have an electrical connector. Go ahead and remove that. Looking at the driver's side of that electrical connector, there's a little squeeze tab. Sometimes you can squeeze it by thumb. If you can't, you can also use a small screwdriver and gently pry it. Give that electrical connector a quick inspection. Make sure you don't see any corrosion. Assuming it looks good, go ahead and set that panel aside. Let's continue with our small pocket screwdriver and we're gonna carefully remove this area. We'll give it a quick inspection and set that aside. Once you have that off of there, we're gonna continue on by grabbing underneath this area and carefully pulling it rearward. This panel has several clips that push directly into the dash. So by pulling it rearward, it should want to unclip. Grab on the other side, do the same thing. Now we can make our way around up along the top. Now at this point, you want to pay attention to the reset for your odometer. We've got that little button up there. We're going to carefully try to lift this up and around it without breaking that off. Now that we have this separated a little bit, we're going to continue on with that small pocket screwdriver. We'll have to remove each of these switches from the panel itself. This can fairly easily be done by coming with the pocket screwdriver up along the top. I'm trying to get in between the switch and the bezel and gently press it. That'll unlock it. Go ahead and press that the rest of the way through and continue on to the other. Now we can grab that bezel and lift it straight up and off, being extremely careful for our trip odometer reset. There it is, friends. Now that we have that out of the way, let's continue on by putting the key in the on position. Once you've done that, put your foot on the brake and then put your vehicle in neutral. You want to make sure that you have all of your tires blocked so there's no way your vehicle can roll off on its own. Now once you've done that, we'll go ahead and put this into the off position and then disconnect the negative battery terminal. For this, we'll use a 10 millimeter wrench to loosen it. Once it's loose enough, set it aside so it's making no contact with your battery post. Make your way back into the passenger compartment. We're going to remove the shifter knob by turning it counterclockwise until it's removed. Let's continue on with an angled pick. The area that we want to pay attention to is down inside this area. You're going to find a rectangular trap door that you need to remove. To remove this, use your angled pick and come right in like this. Once you have one side broken free along the top, do the same on the other side. Along the bottom, you have these three tabs that just slide straight down and in. So once you have the side tabs unlocked, you can lift this up and out. Now with that out of the way, we can carefully grab onto this area. We're going to try to lift it up and backwards diagonally. Now once you have that broken free, we're going to continue lifting this up and rearward, continuing in the diagonal motion. Pay attention to the shifter knob. You want to make sure it slides out of this area. With that set aside, we're going to move along to the wiring harness for it. Along this area, right where my pocket screwdriver is, there's a little squeeze tab. 
Carefully get in between this area, gently pry it, and then separate the wiring harness. Set that aside. Let's continue on with a plastic trim tool. We're gonna start removing the face plate for the stereo here. I'll carefully get in between this area and gently separate it. Once you have that off, have a look from the backside. We can start disconnecting all of the wiring. We'll start here, carefully give this a little wiggle and remove it. Quick inspection as we go. For this one, you're gonna find that you have a locking tab. For this, you wanna press down on this area and then pull that locking tab around the lock. on rolling. This last one off of here. Set this aside. Continue on to the four wheel drive switch. Now let's make our way over to the passenger side. Along the bottom of the dash, you're gonna find two more Phillips head screws. Remove each of those. The next thing you wanna do is open up the glove box. You're gonna find six more Phillips head screws. Two on either side and four in the center. Remove all of them. When you remove this screw in the center, you can also remove the latch. Now let's grab onto this whole area here and carefully pull it away from the vehicle. Now we can start removing the radio bezel from the dash area. Now this is gonna be pressed in semi-diagonally. It has some push clips that go in at this angle. There's gonna be several of them that make their way all the way around. Our radio bezel is broken, so I'll just lift this up and out of the way so you can have a peek underneath. Along this area is where you can tell one of the little push tabs should have slid into the dash. It comes in directly at this angle, so when you go to pull this off, don't try to pull it straight up. You're going to break them off. I'll just remove any pieces from here that are in our way. Now to remove this, the easiest way to do it would be using a plastic trim tool because you don't want to damage your dash in any way. We'll carefully try to get in between the bezel and the dash and gently start pulling it away. While I'm prying here, I'll also grab onto this area and try to tug at the same time. Now keep in mind, while we're pulling this off, we do still have some wiring attached to the bottom area. So we can't pull it fully away, but we should be able to pull it away far enough to access it. Here we are. As you can tell, this one's very bad condition. That's okay. So you just make your way along all the sides and down to the bottom eventually and start pulling it out. Along the bottom area, you're going to find that the radio bezel goes underneath this. All you have to do is carefully get behind this area and gently pull it away. Once you've pulled it away, you should be able to pull this out a little further.
There we are. Now we can gain access to our last wiring harnesses. Let's reach down in here and start disconnecting these. For each of the power outlets, you're going to find that you have a small connector lock down along this area. I'll just get right on it, squeeze it, lift it up, and give it a quick inspection. Here's the tab that I squeezed from underneath right where my index finger is. I'll do the same to the other side real quick, and then move along to the center. For the center, we'll use a small pocket screwdriver. Coming along the passenger sides where you're going to find the locking tab, we'll gently get in between there and pry it up. Now we can lift this up and out of here. Now over on the bench, we're going to start swapping over our miscellaneous accessories. Let's start in the center here. In this area, you're going to find that you have a spot for three switches. On our particular application, we only had one switch in this area, but there is two covers. To remove these, the process will be the same exact thing. Use a small screwdriver, come in between the cover and this area, and gently pry it up. Once you've done that, we'll do the same on the far side. After you have that off of there, you can just go ahead and transfer it over to the new one. I like to put these in the same exact spot, but of course you can arrange them as needed. Now we can move along to taking out each of these. I've already removed the one from over here, so I can show you exactly what we are going to be dealing with. Let's have a look at the one that's still in here. Looking at this, you're gonna find that you have two locking tabs, one along this area and one right over here. What we need to do is use an angled pick, get in between the locking tab and this metal area and gently separate it. As I'm doing that, I'm gonna be trying to press this down a little bit that should unlock it. Once you have both of them broken free, you can push them out through the front side. When you remove these, it's important to make sure you put them back on the original side that you had removed them from. This is the side that I had just removed it from. Let's tip it up so we can have a look. When we put this in, you'll notice that it really only wants to go in one way. So all you have to do is just keep turning it until it feels as though every mount is lined up and then press it in. There we are on the far side. The next thing I like to do is just take a pick Try to get in between this area and just pry it up. I want to make sure that both of my locking tabs are locked in. We'll give that a little push, trying to push it through towards the front. If it does not move, continue on and do the exact same thing to the other one. Okay, we've got one last piece on here to transfer over. To remove this, looking along the bottom of it, you're gonna find a tab that you can squeeze in, and then it should wanna push through towards the front. Let's take this and get it lined up properly. We have the area for our locking tab. Looking at this, you can see the exact area where it needs to line up with. Let's put it in through from the front towards the rear and lock it in. Give it a push to make sure it's completely secure. Now we can get back over to the vehicle. Okay friends, let's get our faceplate installed. We'll start with the wiring. 
Listen for a click, give them a tug to make sure they're secure as you continue. Now we can start rolling the bottom into place. As we do it, you want to pay attention to your locking tabs. We have one along the bottom driver's side and you'll have one along the lower passenger side as well. They need to fit into their corresponding holes in the dash. So we'll carefully slide this down. Sometimes you just have to pull on this edge here. There we are. Now I'm going to wait on pressing that in. I'll continue on doing the same on the passenger side. Now at this point, we can go ahead and press in both of those lower tabs. Move along to your four-wheel drive switch. We'll plug this in along the back side. Give it a little wiggle to make sure it's completely secure. Now once you have your push tabs lined up, we're going to continue on by carefully pressing this in. If it feels as though it's binding in any way, more than likely one of the push tabs that makes its way around isn't lined up properly. Be extremely careful not to break it, otherwise it's going to shake around in your dash. Feel all the way around it to make sure it's completely secured. Let's have a look from the back side you're gonna find that you have four locking tabs, two along the top, and then you should have two along the bottom. Let's have a quick look at this plate area here. You're gonna be able to find all of the corresponding holes. We wanna make sure that we have those lined up in the end after we connect all of our electrical connectors, and then we'll carefully press it in. Let's start putting in the electrical connectors now. There's one, as I connect them in, I'm giving them a little tug just to make sure they're completely secured in place. Make sure you swing over those gray locking connector tabs. Now let's connect in this connector as well. Looking at one side of the connector, you're going to find that you have two little tabs that protrude out from it. And on the other side, it's going to be kind of hollowed out. You want to have the hollowed out side facing towards the driver's side when you insert this. Make sure it's nice and secure. Line up all four of those tabs and carefully press it in place. Feel all the way around to make sure it's completely secured and aligned properly. Now let's continue with the center console shifter plate. Have a look from the back side real quick. We've got our electrical connector. We obviously want to pay attention to that. And you also have several little push clips. All those push clips need to align with their corresponding areas. Now with all that said, let's continue on with that electrical connector. We'll lock that in first. Now we'll take this and we'll put it over the shifter shaft. Now that that's in place, we'll swing this down and prepare to latch it in. When we bring it down, we want to come down diagonally. Continue on to the center console trim plate. You want to make sure you have these three locking tabs facing down. You can see the area that they go into. Slide it right in there and then press the top in so it locks in position. Continue on to the shifter knob. We're going to put this on, turn it clockwise until it bottoms out.
That's a good idea to make it so it's nice and straight. Now we can continue on putting on this glove box trim piece. Let's have a look from the backside real quick. You're going to find that you have four alignment tabs. On this, you'll also find that you have some push clips. You want to make sure that you have the push clip areas lined up with their corresponding holes and the alignment tabs as well. Once you have them lined up, we'll continue on by gently pressing this in. Now it's time to install our mounting bolts. You'll find that you have six mounting bolts that look the same and two that look different. Save the two that look different for the bottom. We'll use the six that look the same for along the top. Now we can put on the latch striker. When you look at this, you're going to find that you have six holes on it. You want to make sure that you have the area with the two smallest holes facing down. That's where the alignment little pins are supposed to align with. Snug them up. Close your glove box. Once that's closed, continue on to your two lower mounting bolts. Time to make it back out to the engine compartment and reconnect the negative battery terminal. Put it on all the way against the battery and snug up that 10 millimeter nut. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now let's make our way back into the passenger compartment. We're going to put the key in the on position. You don't need to start the vehicle. Step on that brake pedal and put it back in park. Remove the key. Now it's time to install our instrument cluster bezel. Let's have a look at the back side. You'll find that you have several push clips making their way all the way around. And then if you were to look at the dash, you'll find the corresponding holes. Keep all that in mind. Let's take this and put it in place. We're not going to press it all the way against the dash yet. Be careful for the trip button along the driver's side here. Now we can continue on to our switches. Line them up with their corresponding holes and slide them in from the back side. Make sure it's nice and secure. You don't want it to fall in once you get everything back together. Do the exact same thing to your other switch. Now we can start aligning all of those alignment tabs and press this into position. Here we are. Once you're sure it's completely pressed in, continue on with this piece. Now we can put on our lower driver side dash panel. Make sure you reconnect in any switches that you had removed. After that, you're going to continue on by lining up all of your push tabs with their corresponding holes. Once it's lined up, press it into place. Once it's in place, continue on with your two lower mounting screws.
Okay friends, we got the truck back together. At this point, you just want to test everything's functionality. Keep in mind, you disconnected a lot of electrical connectors and you want to make sure everything functions properly. Aside from that, thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.